Infection Control Part 2. Infection control practices are critical to reduce the transmission of infections from one person to another. Everyday healthy habits that prevent the spread of disease. And the number one healthy habit to prevent the spread of disease is hand washing. Hand washing is one of the most important actions to prevent spreading germs from one person to another. Hand washing removes germs from the folds and grooves of the skin, from under the free edge of the nail plate by lifting, rinsing germs and contaminants from the surface of your skin. Wash your hands before and after working with each client. Hand sanitizers are a second option to hand washing. Pathogenic bacteria, viruses, or fungi can enter the body through the following routes. Skin, broken or inflamed skin, such as a cut, scratch, bruise, or rash, but not through intact skin, which is an effective barrier to infection. Now, what we have to remember about broken or inflamed skin, such as a cut or a scratch, we also have little cracks in our skin from using tons of hand sanitizer. So therefore, it is not going to be an effective barrier to protect any type of bacteria entering into your skin because of the dryness. So remember that. Use lots of lotion and ointment to protect your skin. Next route would be the mouth. Contaminated water, food, fingers, or objects. Your nose. Inhaling infectious dust or droplets from a cough or a sneeze. So remember, any person that sneezes and does not cover their sneeze, it is shooting out 220 miles per hour. Your eyes and ears, organisms living in water transmitted through swimming, genitals, unprotected sex. Common antiseptics used in a salon, spa, and barbershop. Hydrogen peroxide generally works at 3%. It also works as an antiseptic and should never be used on an open wound. Isopropyl alcohol is effective in cleaning the skin, can be drying, can cause skin irritation, not to be used as an disinfectant, only as a cleaner or antiseptic. So we have to remember that hydrogen peroxide and isopropyl alcohol can only be used as an antiseptic and isopropyl alcohol can be used as a cleaner but not as a disinfectant. So neither one can be used as a disinfectant. Remember that. Choosing a disinfectant, you must read and follow manufacturer's directions. Most concentrates have a 10 minute contact time. Most wipes have a two minute contact time. As concentration goes up and contact time goes down, disinfectants become more corrosive and damaging to implements. Disinfectants must also have efficacy claims on labels. The body prevents and controls infection through healthy, uncompromised skin, the body's first line of defense, body secretions such as perspiration and digestive juices, white blood cells that destroy bacteria, and antitoxins that counteract toxins. There are two types of parasites commonly encountered in the salon, spa, and barber environment. Pediculosis capitis. Now, sometimes this term can be confused with tinea pedis because we see pedi, P-E-D-I, and we automatically think of feet or pedicures. But we, what, what we want to remember about this word is cap. So you put a cap on your head, right? So pediculosis capitis, infestation of the hair and scalp with head lice. Parasite responsible for contagious disease and conditions. So remember CAP. Scabies is a contagious skin disease caused by the itch mite, which burrows under the skin. Contagious diseases and conditions caused by parasites should only be treated by a doctor. Contaminated countertops, tools, and equipment should be thoroughly cleaned and then disinfectant disinfected with an EPA registered disinfectant per manufacturer's directions. Bleach solution for 10 minutes. Trivia question, what bleach solution do you immerse your equipment for 10 minutes, your implements? What bleach solution do you immerse your implements for 10 minutes? Is it low level, high level, or blood and body fluid? 
So the answer is going to be low level. Low level. You're going to immerse your implements for 10 minutes with a low level bleach solution. Demonstrate safe work practices and safety precautions. Tools and equipment should be placed so that items are safely stored when not in use. They also should be accessible. Disinfecting jars should be set back toward the wall. Partition is going to limit the risk of accidental spills. Now this paragraph I have highlighted in purple is because this is the answer to the most asked question when taking your practical exam. If a tool or implement is dropped on the floor during a service, it must be replaced with a disinfected tool or you must stop the service and properly disinfect the tool before continuing with the service. Good reason to keep extra. I need not say more about that paragraph. All tools implements should be in good working condition. Replace damaged tools immediately or send to a manufacturer for service. Never use faulty or broken equipment. A well-planned workstation with sufficient and conveniently placed outlets can help minimize tangle cord syndrome. Never place any tool or implement in your mouth or pocket. Keep chairs, headrests, tables, heat lamps, and lighting fixtures in good working order. Dust and clean regularly to avoid dust buildup. We also must maintain lighting fixtures. Ventilation. Heating and air conditioning vents should be located to perform their optimal functions without interfering with services. Vents should be vacuumed or cleaned periodically. Fumes from chemical applications and nail care products require sophisticated filtration units that cleanse and detoxify the air. Once installed, air filters should be changed or cleaned regularly. Proper ventilation and air circulation are extremely important in today's salons, spas, and barbershops. Particles from products and disinfectants can be inhaled, may cause allergic reactions or other health problems. Exits should be marked and identifiable. Employees should know where exits are located and how to evacuate quickly in case of fire or other emergencies. Fire extinguishers should be placed where they are ready accessible. All employees should be instructed on how to use. It is a law that fire extinguishers should be checked periodically, follow manufacturer's recommendations and state and local ordinances. Children can cause serious risk of injury to themselves in the salon, spa, and barbershop. Post notices in the reception area advising patrons that children are not to be left unattended. Do not allow children to play, climb, or spin on hydraulic chairs or wander freely. When performing a service on a child, try, not, try to anticipate the child's sudden moves. Hold the child gently but firmly in one hand while working with the other. Adult clients. Assist clients, especially elderly, in and out of chairs, onto and off treatment tables. Always lower a hydraulic chair to its lowest level and lock it in position. Hold doors open for clients and assist in walking when necessary. Always support the back of the chair, support the client's head to avoid neck strain. High risk clients. It is important to practice proper infection control with every customer. Keep in mind, most customers know they have impaired immune systems and don't know how important it is to share. Sometimes they are embarrassed and we also want to be extremely important with cancer patients. Diabetic customers have immune systems that do not work effectively and have impaired healing. Clients on medications for conditions such as asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, have suppressed systems and are susceptible to infection. Pregnant clients have smell sensitivity. They may have a reaction to chemicals and must decide what is safe. So please allow them to read labels prior to their services. The next three slides are glossary terms. It is very important to know the definitions to these terms. A lot of times when we are testing, we may not know what the question is asking. 
And therefore, if we do not know what the question is asking, we are unable to select the answer that is right in front of us. Because with multiple choice, guess what? The answer is there. We just need to know what the correct answer is. So knowing your terms, knowing your glossary terms, knowing your definitions is really important. Here's our first slide, starting with the word AIDS, ending with the word infectious. Here is our second slide, starting with the word inflammation, ending in the word tinea capitis. The other word was pediculosis capitis, tinea. What is the definition of tinea? You got tinea barbae also. Ending with tuberculocidal disinfectants, capable of destroying tuberculosis. Last word is containment. Just one more thing. Bacteria fall into two categories, non-pathogenic, which is harmless, and pathogenic, which is harmful. Salons, spas, and barbershops must maintain strict standards for cleaning and disinfecting at all times to prevent the spread of pathogenic organisms. Always refer to the manufacturer's directions for proper cleaning and disinfecting methods and recommendations. Infection control will also prevent exposure to blood and visible debris or residue such as dust, hair, and skin. Proper infection control requires two steps, cleaning and then disinfecting with an appropriate EPA registered disinfectant. The CDC requires autoclaves to be tested monthly to ensure implements are properly sterilized. The accepted method is the spore test. Antiseptics are registered and regulated by the FDA. Complete immersion, there is enough liquid in the container to cover all surfaces of the item being disinfected, including handles, for 10 minutes or manufacturer's recommendations. Bleach used in a salon, spa, barbershop must be EPA registered as a disinfectant. For review, please visit Kahoot. Go under Discover, hashtag TDLR Written Prep, and Quizlet. We also have two platforms there. High five, you got this.